Hello and welcome to episode 52 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We probably got a long episode today. Uh, you want to start by treasure hunting? Let's do some treasure hunting. How many items do you have? Five. I have two. It's pretty good. I had two yesterday. <laughs> Was that one of the two? No, this isn't. This is not treasure. It's just something I got for nausea. Because she likes Marilyn Monroe. Oh, okay. Upskirt shot of Marilyn Monroe. The lady's like, I'm like, how much for the picture? She's like, I really like Marilyn Monroe, so a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt no need to haggle that price. <laughs> Alright, so you want to reveal a couple items? Sure. So, I'm probably in contention of losing two weeks in a row. Brandon oh. nodded his head yes in affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is one item I got from Denio's. Uh, I haggled. I asked him, how much for the games? He said, $3. I said, would you take $5 for two of them? He said, sure, why not? So here's one of them. You're gaining levels in bargaining. Yeah. Speech. Oh, Resident Evil 2. No. I mean, 4 for PlayStation 2. That's heck of time. Complete. Complete. Check that shit before I uh, gave him the money. Yeah. How much did that worth? Eight bucks. It's tight. Another one? Yep. This is a, the other two for five dollars I got. Red Dead Revolver. That was a pretty good game. I never played it. You played it? I heard it was really good. Uh -huh. it was like <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> but... <t> <laughs> Throwback to Gold Dust on Episode 7. Um, it's like Grand Theft Auto, but taking place in the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, how much is that worth? Eight dollars. Okay. I guess I'll reveal my items. Now this one's a little obscure. Yep. <laughs> Always is. Because I've never seen this before. Shadow Hearts New World. Yeah, I've never seen this before either. It's cool. How much is it worth? I think $22. You think? Yes. It doesn't meet the half. It must be worth more than. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have bought it just for... <laughs> meeting the half criteria. I think it was actually 26 now that I think about it, but I'll check. What Brad and Brandon are referring to is the, the, the label on the game says it's worth $14, or at least that's how much Brad paid for it. And in order to qualify as legitimate treasure has to be at least double, the value has to be double what they paid for it. That is correct. So now they're both on their phones trying to figure out what the the game's value is twenty twenty four dollars. Right, right. Yep. What's fourteen plus fourteen? Twenty three. <laughs> Twenty eight. It's kind of unfair though, because you're still making profit. Aren't yeah. You? And here's my next item. I saw this at the auction today. Did you? Yeah. It's worth it twelve dollars. Oh, wow. I got it for $3. What is it? It's a just a Game Boy game. I never heard of it. Is it I, I Boxel or It's two called Bo Boxel 2. Boxel 1 is worth less. I've never heard of it either. So 24 plus... What? 12? 12. So, yeah, it's what? 20... No. 36? So I have how much to make up? 20? To tie? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this game I bought at Dimple. Uh, not going to make any profit off of it because we need it for the collection. What did you say? I, I said this game I bought from Dimple. Uh, not going to make any profit, profit from it because we need it for the collection. 
Still counted as treasure, though. Yeah. Ooh. Baseball Simulator 1000. We don't have this? I, I guess look. not, huh? Uh -uh. Cool. It's worth five bucks. This game is the mystery generation I told you about that I don't want to give away. <laughs> I guess I, I guess I would categorize it as Generation Zero. Atari. <sighs> Whoa, Mario Brothers. Is that like eighteen? What is that? Ten. Ten. That's Hecatype Mario Brothers for the Atari by Nintendo. Hmm. That is Hecatype. And this is my last item, which I haggled at the uh, Denios, the flea market today. She, I said, how much for the games? She said, $7. <laughs> she had like a Russian accent. I said, will you take five? Yes. <laughs> 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 Zelda Four Swords. That's tight. It's a link to the past and Four Swords. That's heck of tight. Oh, it is. How much is that worth? Fifteen. So I lost. Yep. So we'll go ahead and reveal the prize punishment wheel. We have taxi, which you still owe me one. We'll do it uh, for the July weekend. Awesome. Corn dog, number three. Void, expensive item for the next week. Number four. Surprise smell. Surprise smell. Uh huh. Number five, ten dollars added to bank or taken away from bank, depending on prize or punishment. Six, a lovely foot massage. <laughs> Seven, <laughs> icicle. Eight, buttercup. Oh yeah, I did go down. Nine, shockmaster. Ten, kiss Link on the mouth. Oh man. Oh, man. <laughs> And for you, you audience that don't know, Link is Nick's dog that is <laughs> laying down right now, exhausted and dehydrated. So, I'll okay. get my... Let's do your prize first. Alright, roll dice. Ten, five, seven. Ten, ten dollars added. Icicle or kiss Link on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> And what, it's got to be like 10 seconds? <laughs> no, just like a... No. <laughs> Stick my tongue out? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll take the $10 added to my bank next week. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yeah. Nine, five, three. I get to void your next item, where it was expensive. Minus $10. Shockmaster. <laughs> if, if I pick the other two, I'm like definitely going to lose next time. I think so. I think I'm going to have to do the Shockmaster. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be my... my the, the losing streak has ended now. Oh, is it? It's going to end here and now. Alright, where's the Shockmaster? Okay, so right now I have uh, deployed the... Shock mechanisms on Brad's tricep, bicep, forearm, and hand. And we're going to... Nick is going to time this for 15 seconds. Ready? <laughs> Five, four, oh. three... Two, Not one, again. Zero. I stopped it when you said five. I can't even open my hand. Five, four, three. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> that was tight. <laughs> you looked like Josh Blue. That hurt like a bitch. <laughs> you been doing it on yourself? Yeah, I see how it feels. <laughs> the, the, the sound that you made, it looked like someone just like shot some heroin or something. <laughs> just felt a, felt a sudden rush. 
I'm not feeling anything. Maybe because you need both leads connected. Ooh. Ooh. Dude! <laughs> oh, dude. Down. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Have you ever felt that? Oh, man. So Brandon just discovered if you unhook the the muscle stimulator and just touch the the metal wires, it shocks you. Oh, it leaves a, a live wire. Oh, if, it, yeah. That next time, you you still want to try it? Yeah. Which one is it on? Ooh, oh, you got it's only on two. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Brandon's hand was spazzing. <laughs> you could see it on YouTube. <laughs> Brandon wanted to try it out. <laughs> oh, that was that was tight. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, where did that come from? That's from my juice. Oh. Holy cow. I think we need to change the battery in it too and it'll be hurt more. Oh, that's tight, yeah. <laughs> that's tight. <laughs> I'm glad my wife doesn't use this anymore. Oh, she was like, are you just going to throw it away? What? No. Yeah. You missed out on the, the su surprise smell. That was something I, I told Brandon about. I told him about how my the the wound created from my cyst. <laughs> Every once in a while, I have to reach down there because it's it's bandaged because I it drains. Yeah, gross. I know, but uh, I have to just make sure that the bandage is in the right place where it catches the drainage. And I sniff my fingers just out of instinct, and it's like it's horrible. It's like a rancid bile. It smells like death. It's horrible. I thought it was either going to be that or the crevice of Brandon's belly button. <laughs> I've kept that pretty clean. Yeah, me too. It doesn't smell like vomit anymore. Yeah. So are we going to go over our list now? You want to tell them what we're doing? Yeah, so what we're going to do is uh, each milestone, each 50, I think, we're going to recalibrate, as you call it. We did it in episode one and two. Yes. So we're going to talk about some nostalgic games for various systems. And we will start off with Generation 1, Nintendo. The true Generation 1. Yeah. Do you want to roll the dice? Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Uh, sure. Uh, 12. Roll. Uh, Nick gets 11, Brad gets 10, I get 7. Alright. I don't... <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what I was supposed to come up with, so I just uh, took down some notes about a couple of games from my childhood that I really enjoyed playing. Uh, the one that came to mind as that as one that didn't hadn't been discussed previously was RC Pro Am for the NES. Have either of you guys played that game? We have that game. That's cool. Uh, it's developed by Rare. Uh, released in 1988. It's a single player game in which the player controls a radio controlled vehicle through a series of 32 tracks. Each race contains four racers and you always control the red vehicle. Uh, in every race there's a variety of hazards like rain puddles and oil slicks and you're also able to attack the other racers with missiles and bombs. Uh, there's also bonuses you can pick up to increase the, uh, the effectiveness of your vehicle. There's a roll cage that keeps your vehicle strong, makes you invulnerable to uh, the other attacks. Uh, there are some sticky tires you can pick up to increase the traction of your vehicle, and there's also uh, little engine symbols that you can pick up throughout the track that increase the top speed of your vehicle. Uh, there's also a little bonus thing where there's like a letter on each t course. If you pick up eight of them, you spell out the the word Nintendo, yep. and you get to upgrade your vehicle. You start off with like this little radio-controlled truck. Uh, you upgrade to, it's like a better-looking truck. It kind of looks like an SUV almost. And then finally, once you get to the, the 
deep in the game you get like the really speedy cart which is really hard to control but it goes super fast um i wanted to put this i want to talk about this game a little bit because i think it deserves a lot of props um it was one of the first racing games to feature a top-down camera angle instead of a first-person camera angle like um road racer and like you know bill whatever. elliott bill elliott's nascar challenge that game sucks. Uh, <laughs> i forgot about that days of thunder um wasn't there like a hard driving? I think was a game that was first person, um, road rash, things like that. Just kind of kind of limits your view, and uh, it's it's not quite as enjoyable. Uh, it also was one of the first games to uh, combine combat and racing, and it inspired games like Mario Kart, Super Off Road Racing, and Rock and Roll Racing. So. It's a game I played a lot. Uh, the only downside to the game is that it was a single player game, so you couldn't really play it with other friends. You just sit there and watch, which I find incredibly enjoyable watching people play with games, but not everyone enjoys that. Uh, did you have any thoughts on RC Pro Am? I, I really liked it. That was one of the racing games that was far better than its knockoff Super Sprint. Oh, man. Super Sprint. I just remember trying to go around the track and collecting all the letters. Yep. And it, it, it handles really well, too. It does. I, I like that, um, you know, the whole Tokyo Drift thing. Yeah. Like, it does that in that game. It's like, wow, it, it does a really good job of creating that effect. Like, the faster you go, the harder it is for you to turn in. You can hear the tires squealing as you try to turn. It's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, I, now that you mentioned Super Sprint, I guess that's another example of like a top-down type game. The camera angle in RC Pro Am was a little bit different because it actually followed you around the track at, from the top-down, whereas our, our Super Sprint was just, here's the track, you can see all the cars all at once. But uh, RC Pro Am was a little bit more zoomed in. The other thing about Super Sprint was I hated that like as soon as you bumped into any wall, your car would blow. Do you remember that? Yeah. It was, it was so annoying. You had to be super super careful just whenever you went around any corner rc prom wasn't quite like that there there were some oil slicks if you hit an oil slick you'd lose complete control of your vehicle and if you ran into a wall the wrong way then your car would blow up you have have like have to wait like five seconds to regenerate or whatever but um you wouldn't blow up nearly to the degree that you would in super sprint so i found it much more enjoyable so that's all that i had to say about rc prom unless you guys want to say anything about it I never collected the letters. I mean, like, could never complete it. It was I've always tried to, but never spelled on Nintendo. Really? Yeah. I never actually beat the game. Um, I got pretty far in it, but I never completely beat it. Uh, be interesting to go back and play it again to see if I actually could, kind of like Brad did with Ninja Gaiden. Be fun to do, but I don't think it's available on Wii. Where mm -hmm. I don't have, I don't have that game. You said you have it. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Then that might be fun. Yeah. <clears throat> Funny you should mention Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> we all heard that that was a game that I beat just recently, and that actually takes me to my next game of the week that I'm going to be doing. Let's see if this little sound bit will work. <laughs> Ghosts and Goblins. I'm going to be playing that game next, and I'm going to beat the shit out of it. Are you going to beat it twice like you have to? I'm oh, going to beat it. That's crazy. No, you won't. I will. <laughs> I'll take a blood oath. Oh, man. So is that your, the game you want to talk about for Nintendo? I've played part of it already, <laughs> Ghosts and Goblins, and just going through that that level is just crazy, the, even the first level, but as the more and more I sat down and played it, the further and further I got, so I feel I'll be able to beat it here. Ooh. Yep, the little Ooh. condom ghosts. <laughs> That's all I had to say about Ghosts and Goblins. Good luck. I'll bet $10 to your $5 you won't beat it twice. Taken. Alright. What does I'm that mean? Well, I'm betting ten dollars against his five dollars. You got to, we have to put a time frame on it, though. Oh man, <laughs> can't just be for eternity. <laughs> what's what's this month? June. Yes, yeah, June twenty twenty first. I say by SummerSlam. August. August twenty third. By that's two month? months. Yeah. 
right. That's fine. I, I would bargain with you, but it's not worth it because you're not going to do it anyway. <laughs> That's what Brian laughed right there. <laughs> Good luck. I hope you do it. But I don't think you can. I'll plan on it. <laughs> Uh, the game I'm gonna I choose to talk about for NES, uh, pretty much stock answer. We haven't talked about this game too much in detail. We've talked about its sequel a lot, but the original Legend of Zelda, uh, just so many great memories with that. Just exploring this world when you didn't have an internet or a strategy guide to look into, it was almost impossible to find all of the worlds. Uh, it definitely took exploring um, games to a whole new concept. Uh, just crazy exploration. Uh, like trying to find uh, just like level 8 in the burning... We had to burn the forest. And the magic sword. Yeah. In the graveyard. <laughs> Magical sword. Yeah, you had to push on all the little tombstones and... One of the tombstones wouldn't release the ghost, and you're like, what's up with that? <laughs> and I, I guess it was just word of mouth how everyone got to know where everything was, because I know we didn't discover everything on our own. Uh, trying to find all the heart containers, that would took, took months to figure out, especially with the blue candle. <laughs> you could only burn one per screen. <laughs> but I guess when you got the red candle, it was much better. Uh, you could burn multiple times. Yeah, P Princess Zelda was not satisfied with the blue candle. She needed the red candle. <laughs> yeah, whenever Link would go in and burn her, he'd have to leave the room and come back in. <laughs> and she was like... What the fuck? The, the, first, the first one's already cold. What the hell, go bring back the red candle. Be a man. <laughs> but that last dungeon was insane. I remember you had to fight oh, those... Man. Terra thing, Pateras, the little flies, those took away hell of life. Yep. And it, it, I liked it because you didn't really know where to go because, of course, you didn't get the map till later on. And even when you did, you had to b bomb certain walls and you didn't know what to bomb to get through where. Sometimes the maps were deceptive too. Like, the, I think level seven, like the it's in the dungeons in the shape of like a dragon head. Yeah. And if you there in the middle of the eye, there's like a secret room there you can bomb into. I think you can actually walk through the walls in a couple of them. On the second quest, I think. Yeah. There might be a couple yep. of the first quests. That's, that is right. You can. Crazy. And then mm -hmm. the level three map looks like a swastika. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah definitely a classic game lots of good memories of that that was the that might have been the first game that i played on nintendo i remember getting it for christmas uh when i was a young buck and uh we got mario brothers and duck hunt and zelda and Zel i think zelda was the first one that i played it's a lot of fun lots of good memories and our mom tried to play it and she didn't know where to get the sword so when she first started we were like you have to go in there she's like stop telling me how to play i really <laughs> haven't played it before yeah <laughs> so. have you tried that challenge trying to beat the game without the sword no ken cheney said he's done it before i remember him telling me about that getting all the way to ganon without the sword right mm -hmm. there's there's no way you can beat him though huh mm -hmm. yeah because you need to s slice him and then shoot him wow. Alright, so uh, since I went with RC Prime for NES, for SNES, I'm going to continue that theme and talk a little bit about uh, rock and roll racing. Have you played rock and roll racing? I haven't. This is, uh, it's, it's very similar to RC Program. It's, uh, the, the camera angle's the same, the handling's f fairly similar, uh, but it actually has a lot of cool characters in there. Uh, it's, a two, it's a one or two player game, so that's a really cool difference. Um... But at the beginning of the game, you're allowed to pick your own racer. The coolest guy was Olaf from the Lost Vikings. He was, he just looked I really heard cool. About that. Yeah. yeah, he looked really cool. And um, there's this guy in the game who does commentating. They call him Loudmouth Larry. Have you ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. He basically throughout the game, whenever someone advances or someone crashes or someone falls back in the race, he'll say 
oh, Olaf is dominating the race, or oh, Rick falls back to the back of the pack. <laughs> Something crazy like that. The other cool thing about this game, this is for SNES, like I said, so uh, the graphics are a little bit better, the it handles a little bit be better, um, but it also had some really cool music. As I said, it's called Rock and Roll Racing, so I'm going to play a little bit of uh, the gameplay from Rock and Roll Racing. Bear with me one moment, please. <laughs> this is the very beginning. Back to the bone. And then once you enter into the, the race, there's a whole bunch of different songs, but I'm going to play a little bit of Paranoid for you. What? It's hella tight. It's like a fun too. I want to... Yeah, it's off. So that's a little bit of rock and roll racing for you. It's a really fun game. Uh, another game that Ken Cheney and I used to play all the time. Uh, the other cool thing that they added in that game that they didn't have an RC Pro-Am was kind of a third dimension. Uh, there were hills that you had to go over and of course go down throughout the race, whereas RC Pro-Am was all flat land. Uh, they also added like it was an elevated racetrack, so if you jumped up into the air and you like fell off the side of the race, of course you, your car would be destroyed. So that was another cool feature that they added in there. But uh, sounds like you guys don't have any experience with rock and roll racing, huh? You guys are missing out. You know what that game reminds me of? Huh? Another racing game for Super Nintendo. What's don't that? say it. Biker Maestro nope. Mars. <laughs> no, I guess I missed out on that one. It, it you basically you get to choose your mousey. You have you remember that cartoon Biker Mouse? Uh, yeah, they made a racing game and it was pretty fun. Uh huh. And it has that same concept, same angle, uh huh. Uh, going down into tunnels and up and out. Okay. But it didn't have the cool music like that. Yeah, th there's a whole bunch of different songs on there. Um, let me look it up real quick. I don't have access to all the music, but I can tell you what other songs are on there. Remember who did the voice acting for Vinny the Mouse? Nah, -uh. Scott McNeil. Oh, did he? Yeah. Was Vinny the uh, tough, rugged one or the white one? He was the white one. Uh, Scott McNeil is the voice actor of the original Piccolo on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> English voice actor. The best English voice actor in the world. Fuck Christopher Sabat. Oh, that guy's a jerk and a retard. <laughs> <laughs> a literal retard? Um, uh, he, he just acts retarded sometimes. <laughs> He's all bald and tries to be all like, "Oh, I'm bo like bald Brian." No, I, <laughs> I, I look like Moby. Yeah, he does look like Moby from that that stupid guy, that vegan guy. <laughs> so uh, I played a little bit of Bad to the Bone, a little bit of Paranoid. The uh, the Peter Gunn theme is also on there. Radar Love is on there. Uh, Born to be Wild is on there, and also the Peter Gunn theme. Oh, did I say that, the Peter Gunn theme? Yes. Oh, Hi Highway Star was the one that I skipped. Highway Star by T Deep Purple is also on there. What's Peter Gunn theme? Oh, was that on Ace Ventura? Probably. Okay. It's been on a lot of stuff. Got it. I, I, I think of uh, the Blues Brothers when I think of that mm -hmm. song. Yeah. So, Rock and Roll Racing, that's my uh, SNES game for today. SNES games, I could have went with Super Metroid, but we talked about that to death. The one I wanted to talk about was Tetris Attack. Oh. Remember Tetris Attack? Sure do. That was such a cool puzzle game. Played like Pokemon Trazi, which I never played Pokemon Trazi, though. But Tetris Attack was, you actually got a, when you got enough lines, you would actually attack your opponent, and they turn into like these concrete stones that you had to hit with your lines and once you hit it with your lines it would turn into blocks so it's like a double in your face ball smack what i don't like about that game is in order to beat the computer opponent when you get to the higher levels you have to get combos and it's when at least when i was little it was hecka hard to figure out how to get those combos real quick because those computer guys were fast like bowser 
He was an ass on that game. <laughs> That's why I just mainly stuck with the two-player mode. Yeah. Have you ever played Tetris Attack? No, I, I'm actually a lover of Tetris games, but that I haven't played that one. It's fun. Do we have it? Nope. Uh, I'll get it, though. I saw it at the uh, auction today. I didn't even ask. That it? This next game, I didn't want to... I could have done research on it, but I didn't do it on purpose because I want to experience it from the get-go. I want to actually play this as my next game of the week, perhaps with both of you before we record sometimes. Uh. This game is an action role-playing game released on the Super Nintendo. It features random encounters with side-scrolling battles, although some boss battles are fought with traditional menu-based system. Super Ninja Boy. Oh, yeah. That game's so fun. I'm. We played it a ton when we were little. Rented the hell out of that game. <laughs> but, um... It would, from what I remember, it was just amazing and like the best game in the world to play. And so I want to get that and play it. And that's the game where our AC adapter quit working. Yes. And we had to take the cord and tape it up and around the adapter plug so then it would stay on and we'd play it. And our mom didn't want to go find another cord because. Eventually we had to though. Yeah. So she took us, I think, video game swappers or something to get another plug. Oh, that's when we turned in all those games. Yep. She just should have bought the new plug. <laughs> she made us turn in Lunar 1 and 2 for Sega CD. Is that No. We that didn't... was when we got Final Fantasy 3. Yeah. Uh, Even though our, one of our family members stole the game and she knew it, she made us turn in our games to buy that game back. Yeah. It was like a seventy-four dollar game. Should we talk about what we saw at the auction, or save that for later? I'm not sure. I know what you're talking about. Remember the Final Fantasy three? Uh, I, sure. We're on SNES. Might as well. We saw Final Fantasy three complete. Complete? Yes. How much did they want? How for much it? would you pay for it? Seventy-five. They had it for a hundred. <sighs> It looked so beautiful. It was pretty. Was the case all in good shape too? Yeah. Fuck. I would have paid a hundred for that. You, well, you know where it's. Well, it's at the auction. No one's gonna buy that game for a hundred dollars. So Super Ninja Boy. Yep. We could do that. Maybe at like the sharing place or something. We could all meet there before we record and play it. Cause that game's phenomenal. I'm not familiar, so I'll, that sounds fun. All right. I'm gonna go to N64. Yeah. Alright, uh, I didn't make a whole lot of notes about anything regarding N64 games, but I was just thinking of a game that I enjoyed playing. Uh, in junior high and high school times, uh, the girl we're family and I would get together and play Bomberman 64 a lot. Oh man. It's a really fun game, especially multiplayer. That was the first Bomberman game that allowed you to play with four players without having any sort of like special adaption or, or anything like that. Uh, it also allowed that you uh, can pick up and kick the bombs, whereas in previous games you'd have to have some sort of like power up in order to do that. It was just right out, right out of the gate. You could just throw bombs all over the place and try to trap your friends, and just a lot, lot of fun. Simple game, fun game, and uh, loved it. So was it traditional top-down view, like the okay? That's yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. it's a game where you try to fuck your friends, basically. I don't think I ever played it single player mode. I always played it with multiplayer mode. Is that why Matt's always so uptight? Because you fucked him a lot? <laughs> it's probably not me. <laughs> His brothers, maybe. He's got middle brother syndrome. The game on my list I wanted to talk about. I don't think I've ever talked about this game. You guys might have. Mario 64. Um... The only reason I put this on my list, I was thinking, man, what what really takes me back? It's got to be the big, giant, freaky, scary eel that's in the water in the level, which I'm still afraid of. <laughs> and then when you go to the ice level, the snow level, you hear the crying of the baby penguin. Yeah. And what we used to do, we used to pick him up and throw him off the edge and say, shut up, baby penguin. <laughs> I don't think you'll get a star that way. <laughs> you definitely not, but it's worth it. <laughs> there were a ton of glitches in that game, too. If you got up close to the walls and moved the cameras. I think there was one with Peach masturbating in her bed or something. No, that's wrong. Come oh. on. 
<laughs> you sure? Yeah. Okay. Speaking of glitches, did you guys see that article about the the original Mario Brothers having like some sort of infinite one up glitch? I thought that was false. I, I don't know. I haven't tried it. I haven't researched it. I just actually saw the headline. When you beat the game, do you get to play through it again and the enemies are different? I I don't know. That's what they say. Um, I read the article and it it didn't make sense to me. I haven't read it. So what does it say? What what doesn't make it's, sense? It's about like it? it because I didn't because first of all you start off fighting Buzzy Beetles and I didn't think you fought Buzzy Beetles. In the first level. Yeah, because it, they say you have to beat the game in order to do this. I don't so you beat know. the game, go to world 1-2, uh, die. Then as Luigi, go all the way to 5-2 without dying. And then die in this special area after you hit the beanstalk. Then it takes you back to Mario after you die. The beanstalk is sprouted and there's buzzy beetles. So you get on the beanstalk and just keep hitting them back and forth. But why do that when you could just do the original glitch in World 3-1? It's not really a glitch either. Yeah. The turtle trick? Mm hmm Yeah. Ah, that's interesting. I, I wish I would have looked at it more. I thought it was legit. Like, I didn't know you had to beat the game and do a bunch of stuff with the second yeah. player. That's That's why it's been much. undiscovered for so long, yep. I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, tangent. <laughs> it's fine. My N64 game when I talk about is Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. What? <laughs> that is such a fun game. I know you don't like the those type of exploring games like I do, like Conquered's Bad Fur Day, Banjo-Tooie, Donkey Kong 64. Jet Force Gemini. Yeah, those are all freaking fun games. So you don't like those, and I don't like your Devil May, May Cry games. But Banjo-Kazooie takes... Uh, two players, Banjo the bear and Kazooie the little bird that is his partner. And you team up and have to uh, up throw the bad witch Glenda, I believe her name is. And yes, Grenhilda. Grenhilda, that's right. And you have to go through and um, just find music notes, get special power ups, go through a ton of worlds, and it's extremely fun. The only reason why I didn't put Donkey Kong 64 on my list it's because you need to buy a separate memory upgrade in order to play most of the game or at least or I think the whole thing stupid Donkey Kong yeah in order to play and we rented it from Blockbuster yeah and got the memory pack because they had to give it to us and we just put it on Nintendo and gave the game back without it so that was pretty cool but Banjo Kazooie is super fun too bad it's a rare game and rare is exclusive to uh, gay box now the um, thing I want to talk about Banjo Kazooie is that's we were working at Kmart when we rented it. Our mom rented it for us. <laughs> still, we have jobs and she's still renting games for and us. I came down with the flu, and I told mom to call Kmart and tell them I was sick, mm -hmm. like calling in at school because yeah. I didn't know you had to call it yourself because no one ever told me. <laughs> And it was so weird because they were like, why didn't you just call in? You had your mom call in? I was like, yeah. No one told me I'd have myself call in. I was like 17 at the time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the day after Jordan was born, I called and was like, is it okay if I stay home today? Uh, I was at the hospital all night and my son was born. And they were like, no. What? And I was, only if you could have your brother come in and work for you. And then I was, I asked you, and you're like, no, I'm not going in. And, and then it's, like, weird because you don't need permission to stay home. You could stay home if you don't want to go to work. You might not deal with, want to deal with the repercussions. But I called back and talked to Gino. He was this hella cool gay oh, I guy. I Gino. And he was like, oh, yeah, Bradley, go ahead and stay on home. And then I got to work the next day, and they're like, you went over my head. The supervisor said that. Debbie? Debbie. And I was like, I, I told them I was... I was uh, exhausted from being all night at the hospital while my son was born. And Roberta heard that. And she was like, why don't you just tell him to stay home, Debbie? Yeah. <laughs> like, you stupid bitch. <laughs> she looked like Mae Young. She did. She <laughs> older and Wait, wait, not Mae Young, the other one. Yeah. Um, what was the other one's name? I don't remember. <laughs> we just watched it last night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> old... so something May? No, I mean, Mae Young, obviously. Um. Jesus, I don't remember. It's not important enough to remember. <laughs> but she was an old, wrinkly, carrot top, glassed, rearing motherfucking bitch, is what she was. Oh, man. If I ever see her on the street, I'd elbow her in the hip. <laughs> <laughs> 
Moolah? Fabulous Moolah. Yeah, that's it. So now we're going to go ahead and go into Game Boy. Um, my Game Boy game that I'm going to pick is going to be Pokemon Red. Oh, I picked Pokemon Blue. Huh. That's tight. Uh, I just remember getting it for Christmas. We got blue, right? Yep, we got blue. And we we got that and one Game Boy. And we had to share it between you, me, and Matt. And did Matt yeah. get red? I or, think Mom took us to the to Toys R Us later because she saw how big of a deal this was. And got him red and us some Pokemon cards. <laughs> but the thing that's is you could only save off of one game. Yep. Too bad we didn't have the Game Boy player for Super Nintendo. That would have been better. Yeah, but then uh, I remember we had that was the only game I could remember where we put time limits on each other to play because that game was so fun. It was so innovative. It was just crazy how good it was. And I'm not one to play on a little Game Boy screen, but when that Pokemon well, we had the Pocket Game Boy too, the small one, but that was just so obsessive. It was addicting as hell. I have nothing to offer on this topic. No. Oh. <laughs> What's your favorite Pokemon? Mewtwo. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. That's hella tight. <laughs> Isn't that the one who's like the freaking uh, Shang Tsung of uh, yeah. Pokemon? You can and, do whatever, a little bit of everything. And then Mew is the one who doesn't he love all the Pokemon according to Tim? Yeah. Yeah. Or Tim's daughter, Ariel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I never really got into too many of the handheld games. I got a Game Gear in my youth, but I didn't play it a whole lot. I, I had like a Sonic game, and I had a baseball game that I played quite... I, I did play the baseball game quite a bit, but it was just kind of a time killer. I wouldn't rank it up there with my favorite games or anything like that. That's like a... The Game Gear was hecka big, too. It was like this big. Way bigger, and it had a color screen. The color screen was pretty tight. Yep. Our last category that we're going to discuss today, uh, Sega Genesis. The game that I picked was Castlevania Bloodlines. That game's hecka tight. Uh, I believe it was rated MA-13. And you got to pick uh, a Reinhard and a Lashire, whatever, Eric. What was his name? Yeah, Lashire. And he had a Lance. Then the Bernhardt guy had the Vampire Killer. We always picked the Lance guy because he could jump farther. Yep. And I remember the monsters on there being way better than anything on Nintendo. Uh, well, not Super Nintendo, but normal Nintendo. And it was so cool. You, the first boss was this bloody, pus-looking dog who had half of his body eaten away. I might pick that up and play that again sometime because I have it. Mm -hmm. But that's all I have to say about Castlevania. I picked Shining Force 2. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but that game is just so fun. Uh, upgrading classes. Uh, Matt is a huge Shining Force fan, so he would stay up nights and days playing that game. Part 1, we had, I think... Blockbuster had the only copy of Shining Force, and it didn't save. So every the time the battery ran out. Yeah. So every time we played it, Matt would stay up and try to beat it. We'd take it back after our time was up from Blockbuster, then rent it next weekend, and he'd do it all over again. I remember he got. It wasn't level four. The um, chapter four was the bridge or something. All I remember is we got Gerholt. Is the it? Werewolf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and. It was just so fun. Uh, of course, it's a, a turn-based strategy, uh, but it's extremely well put together. And the battles were very challenging near the end, so that also played a part in me choosing this, because usually games, uh, once you get over-leveled, uh, you, the game was hard, but this game is really hard. It was pretty hard to over-level. Uh, so, a great game. Because when you got... On a high enough level, the enemies would only give you one experience point. Yep, that's right. When you egress back to the town and go fight the battle again, you, they'd only give you one. Yep, they give you less and less experience point based on your level. So, uh, Nick and I went to Denial's this morning. Uh, we actually parked near the parking lot for the gym where the gym boys is. Okay. Like, here's the gym boys, the parking lot's over here, so we walked right through. Uh, right off the bat, we saw a ton of gray gold. Rosa was told to look out for it. I gave, I showed her a <laughs> Nintendo cart to look for it. She really didn't do too much. 
She tried. Yeah, she did. We told her, well, first we told her, um, she said, what are we doing? I said, we're, we're going to Denio. She said, what are we doing here? I said, well, we're going treasure hunting. She, and I asked her if she knew what that what it was. She said, oh, yeah, I know what that is. I said, okay, what is it? She said, it said, means X marks the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I guess you do understand the concept of treasure hunting. <laughs> so uh, we showed her a Nintendo cartridge and said, this is an X, okay? Look for that. She said, okay. <laughs> That's all the time. <laughs> and she kept saying, I think the X is this way. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, we first got there, we saw a slew of, like, just, of course, sports games mainly, but, uh, we come up to this vendor who has Metal Gear Solid. I look it up, the price charting says 11 bucks. I asked him how much he wanted for it, he said 8 I said, alright, I didn't try haggling, I was like, maybe, I'll think about it. So we went throughout the auction, uh, picked up Zelda, um... Uh, Checked out some birds and rabbits in the, in the pet pet area. That was cool. Rabbits are only fifteen bucks. I'm thinking about getting one. Mm -hmm. They poop everywhere, though. Yeah, that's what you could train them to poop in litter boxes. What? <laughs> it just doesn't seem worth it to me. Oh, they're it, for someone who can't have cats and someone who get a ferret. I'm not getting a fucking ferret. <laughs> It's a ferret. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one? Kindergarten. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> so we ended up at this uh, shop near the tent area. His shop is called Double Dragon Guild. What? And I was like, <laughs> and I was like this better not be a gay-ass shop named Double Dragon. And the guy who owned it was actually like 10 feet away. <laughs> <laughs> he has some pretty cool stuff, though. He had... Uh, in package fossil Pokemon fossil starter deck. No randomized cards, so I didn't think it was worth looking into. No. Uh, he had some cool G.I. Joe toys and uh, videos. And Did he have video games? He had a few video games. A few, but his, his store was named Double Dragon Guild. Exactly. So he had Super Mario Brothers Land 2 for Game Boy Advance. It was only worth 10 bucks. I didn't want to bother with them. So. Nick had saw this poker set that looked pretty good. It was big, and uh, he said he... I said, well, how much... It, it was at the guy who had Metal Gear Solid. So we're like, can we go back there? I'm like, yeah, we can. I'm going to try to get that Metal Gear Solid. Uh, so Nick wanted to pay... I said, what's the lowest you go? He said, probably 40 for that. I said, okay. So then we get back to the dealer. You want to take it from here? Well, actually, when I said 40 I was... I was thinking, I wasn't thinking like a treasure hunter. I was thinking like, what is the actual value of that? Mm -hmm. And I've looked at, it was a 500 chip set. And generally you're going to pay 80 to 100 bucks, maybe even more depending on the value of the chips. Is that the set I have, 500? Yeah. And it depends on what how, how good the chips are. How good are. the chips are, yeah. I, I don't know what you paid for it. I, I guess the can, it can go for as, like, as low as like 50 or so. Is that is that about what you paid for yours? $8. Okay, you, you did very well. <laughs> well, it was at the Goodwill. So. Okay. The, chip, the, the chips had um, little dollar markings on them, which a lot, of, a lot of chips don't have any sort of marking on them. They're just different colors. So that was kind of cool. Um, and the case looked like it was in really good shape. So I, when I said $40, Bre Brandon said, you could probably get it a lot cheaper than that. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll try going for 20 then. So we went over to the uh, the vendor and um, he was helping another customer, so I waited till he was done. And I asked him, how, how much do you want for the uh, the poker set over there? He said, it, do you know what ethnicity he was? I'm still trying to figure it out. He must have been Indian. I was going to mimic his accent, but yeah. I don't know if I really can. He do Borat. Does he sound like Borat? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he sounded more like a boo than uh, Borat. Yeah. So imagine I'm doing an Indian accent because I'm not even going to try. Uh, he said something like, oh, I... I Offering it for thirty bucks, I was like, "Oh, I got twenty bucks. Is you you were willing to go like go twenty bucks?" So no, no, thank you. And that was about it. So I I kind of started walking away, and he's all, "It's a good set. I I, I paid seventy five bucks for it, or some shit like that." His son paid seventy five. Like, I was thinking, like, why would you pay seventy five bucks for something? And he said it was brand new too. Mm. He said it was brand new, never used. I was like, well, why would you pay seventy five bucks for something and then expect to? 
sell it for 30 bucks. That doesn't make sense. So I was walking away, and he's, he's like, I'll let it go for 25 Because of Rosa. Is that what you said? Yeah, said because of your daughter. I, I didn't hear that part. That's funny. Uh, so I was like, nah, 20, 20 is what I want to pay for it. And I said, and I started walk, and I walked away. And I think that was when you walked up to him and approached him about Metal Gear. No, right? I went back to you, and I, you're like, you're going to try to haggle for that Metal Gear? I said, this guy's in no mood for wheeling and dealing. Yeah. And then so I decided to try. I said, how much did you say this was? And you're like, $8. Twenty five ninety nine at store. $8. No way. <laughs> he <laughs> said twenty five ninety nine. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. So uh, he was like... Uh, I said, will you do four? And he said, no. Eight dollars. <laughs> he was not negotiating. So I looked at my wallet. I had like four or five twenties because I played poker the night before and I always like to have more money than I need. Uh, and I also had two single dollar bills. And I was like, okay, that's meeting him in between. I want to pay 20. He wants 25 for it. 22 is right in between there. So that he, he should go for that. So I had the cash in my hand. I had $20 and two single dollar bills. And I walked up to him. I said, I have $22 here. This is what I'm willing to pay for that poker chip set. And he, and I was like, do you want it? He's like, no, 25. He's like, are you serious? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I, I want 25. I'm not taking anything less than that. I was like, all right, good luck trying to find someone to, that'll buy it from you. And I just walked away. Yeah. Such an asshole, dude. I don't know what, what he expects to go there and do business if he's not even willing to negotiate. I guess most people are maybe not even negotiating. They probably just take the first price exactly. and, and leave. I didn't even know you could haggle at the Goodwill until, or at the <laughs> the Goodwill yeah. at the, uh, <laughs> thing until I don't remember who told me about it. But I was like, oh, you could barter. But that goes back to the people that when we were looking for a Night Rider, when we saw a Night Rider, uh, it might have been the same friggin' guy. He looks similar. Uh, he I. I said, how much do you want for Night Rider? He said, five dollars. Will you take three? No. Who else is going to buy this fucking game? Really? Exactly. Yeah, that's that reminds me when, when I was, it might have been the, the Hindu guy that I was, um, he like, you thought he was Hindu, but he really wasn't. Uh, I went up and, it probably was because this is how the story went. There was Mario, Duck Hunt, and that track and field one, all the three, three in one cart. And he's all like, you know, like, how do you want the for How much do you want the for She said, it was the same guy. He said, uh, eight dollars. You get that fifteen ninety nine at the store. <laughs> and I was like, I just looked online, and you, it's only worth like five dollars. Oh, you go somewhere else then. That's <laughs> heck of funny. <laughs> yeah, you go somewhere else. Get, get out of here. Two hundred dollars and two hundred. <laughs> I remember you telling me that two hundred. <laughs> And then every aisle went down, he was, like, looking at me. I was like, Aww. you better step off me, bro. Fucking shock your ass. <laughs> <laughs> shock your ass. It was probably the same guy. I bet you it was. Because he, he told me, he meant he made it a point to tell me how much it is in the store. Mm -hmm. When you can't find that game in a store anywhere. <laughs> you, if, I bet you if you would have said, right here, and he says eight, you know, four or five, whatever dollars. Two hundred dollars. Get out of here. <laughs> Maybe. I'm sure he's there every weekend. We'll try it next time we see him. Yes. <laughs> so long story short, that guy's our jerk of the week. Fuck that guy. Whatever fucking ethnicity he is. Whatever <laughs> fucking accent that fucking weasel is. <laughs> That'll do it for episode 52 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.